Okay, I believe we're live. I'm just gonna wait for everyone to show up. Since this is a cook along with me live stream, don't trip over that cord. I want to sort of, you know, wait a little bit until uh, people come in, so so you guys can cook along with me. So I have made this recipe. I made it like four or five times now. It's I have a YouTube video of it too. If you guys are interested, if you're really impatient and want to see how the end product turns out, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's from a uh, there's like a blog or a website or something called Tasty. They have like a bunch of different uh, recipes. Some of them vegan, some of them not. Uh, but this recipe in particular is very good. I'm very fond of it. I make it all the time, and it's pretty much the only way that I really eat butternut squash. Now, what's going on with Jita? Always the first one to show up. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Can always count on you for being here with your blue wrench. What's going on, Mushroom Hunter? Deborah, going on. Uh, I'm just waiting for everyone to show up, and then we'll start streaming. I had to uh, set things up a little bit differently. Oh, you know what? Well, I can I can plug it in later, because I was going to say I had to set things up a little bit differently so that I could actually plug in the Instant Pot, because uh, the cord's only, like, this long. And my extension cord doesn't have, like, the three-prong thing. It only has, like, the two-prong thing. So, um, yeah, I was a little bit limited on how I could set that up. I'm going to change the light just a little bit. this thing will get out of my way. Come on. What are you doing? Get out of the way. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. I'd be here faster if it was a purple wrench. <laughs> yeah, purple's faster. You have the same shirt? That's awesome. Yeah, I got it for seven bucks at Walmart. Oh, no, you have the big Rona. And appreciate you keeping me entertained. Well, I... Hope you feel better soon. Hi from sunny California. It's actually sunny in New York today too, uh, which is nice because it's been snowing recently. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, stay stay away for a while, but I will be back. All right, Linda, you got to do what you got to do, but uh, it'd be I always love having you here. All right, let's see how many people we got in here right now. Thirty nine. All right, yeah. So we'll just get another couple people in here, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. So the only thing that I uh, did so far was because I was like, you know, I don't think that people want to sit around and wait for me to do this. So I just chopped off the ends of both ends of this uh, butternut squash, microwaved it for four minutes, which you don't have to do. I mean, I think you could do it also in the oven, uh, but it just makes it a lot easier when you're peeling. And I don't have the best peeler for this, but, you know, got to make do with what you got. Because um, I've found anyway, when I use this peeler, because it has like an end like right here, it's not it doesn't just like finish with the peeler part. If that makes sense, um, it's sometimes I am kind of limited on like how how well I can peel a squash. Can't wait. Yeah, it's really good. I'll hold down the fort. Yeah, thanks, Vegeta. This is so funny. I made this. My kids hated it. And that night, my three-year-old was struggling in her sleep, and I said, it's saying, I don't want noodles. <laughs> so now I dubbed it Nightmare Mac and Cheese in her house. That's so funny. One more for you, right? Love the long, long hair, pony boy. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to try this at home. Can't wait. Yeah, I, I hope you can make it along with me. If not, maybe later on. Um, what's going on, Sandra? What's going on, Jenny? All right, you know what? I think we got enough people in here. Uh, and we got Pumpkin C666 says they're new here. So welcome, Pumpkin. Uh, all right, so let's just get into it. So like I said, I already... Microwave this for four minutes, chop the ends off, and now you just have to peel it. That's it. And then we will be throwing it all together. Actually, putting this recipe together is actually pretty quick. The longest thing is probably just the peeling, which still doesn't take too long. See, that's I don't know. If, I don't know if you can really see the best like right here. So I'll, I have to like finagle it like different ways. But basically, because there's a plastic part here, come on, focus because it's really dark. Cameras have a hard time focusing when it's like really dark. So basically there's like a plastic piece here and a plastic piece here. So it's hard for me to like get far enough down here and go like this. Uh, let's see, we got a super chat from Jane. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, sorry I am late, just got home from work. Hello viewers, hello mods. Hey Craig, did I miss anything? No, you didn't actually. You have missed literally nothing. So you showed up at just the right time. The only thing that you missed, thanks you by the way for the super chat. I already said thank you, but I always super appreciate you supporting me. Every single one of you guys. And Jane, you're here like all the time. So thank you. Um, 
But all you missed was I microwaved this squash for four minutes and I chopped off the ends and that's really it. So you haven't missed anything. So that's good news. So um, now I'm just peeling the squash. So I really want to get like, I know my parents have a peeler, like what I was talking about, where there's basically no plastic piece right here. It just ends with like the metal part for the, uh, the vegetable peeler. That would make things a little bit easier, but I'm still able to peel it though. No matter what you got. I've actually done this before with a knife. So even if you don't have a vegetable peeler, uh, you know, you could still do this with a knife too. You just got to get the skin off really. intensifies. It's a good workout. Pure forearms trying to hold on to the butternut squash. Oh, now it's slippery. Now I got to the orange part. Maybe I should just like make a mess and pick it up later. I think people like watching people clean and pick stuff up on YouTube. It's like a genre. So maybe I'll just make a big mess. You guys can watch me clean it up. I might have to just switch to a knife. We'll see if I can finish this off. Because it's mostly peeled now. And like I said, this is like the longest part. <laughs> Everything else is pretty quick. It's just it's just throwing stuff into an instant pot, cooking it. And like I've done it in a slow cooker before. Um, that's actually how I did it the first couple times. And then I was like, wait a minute, I could just do it so much faster in the instant pot because Whenever I wanted to do it in the slow cooker, I'd have to plan like eight hours in advance when I wanted to uh, when I wanted to eat this. I'm just gonna grab a knife. Beautiful T-shirt, thank you, thank you. I'm finally off work for a live stream. Well, welcome, Brittany. Happy to have you here. All right. Is this like ASMR? Probably not very good sounding ASMR. Sorry, I just have to focus. Carrying a sharp object slash weapon. Okay, now this is ASMR. I guess when I talk quietly, I can focus better. This is probably the only way I really eat mac and cheese, really the only way I eat butternut squash. This is like one of my favorite recipes, I would say, because it's so, so quick, not very expensive, and it's really not unhealthy, especially when you omit the oil, which personally I have found to be not super necessary to have the oil in there. Like I made it without oil and it seemed pretty much the same. The Miss Lissa 555, uh, please green screen Golden Girl Kitchen for this. That's a good idea. All right, yeah, you'll have to stick around for the green screen. I will uh, I will do that, especially remind me if I forget. Um, okay, so it looks like we have a skinless squash. I have to stay in front of it so I can focus. Okay. 
Now I just like to, you can chop this wherever you want, but I like to chop it like right where like the bulbous part starts because that's like where all the seeds are. So I just chop this off right here. Yeah, and you can, so there's no seeds in here, which is perfect. And then you can see the opening, there's gonna be seeds in there. So why don't I put this over here for now, make some more space. And I, so I don't know if you guys have this problem, but like when I cut squash, sometimes it goes great. And then other times I start cutting it and it starts going this way. But because squash is so hard, it's like really hard to uh, correct it. Uh, let's see. And Tani sent a uh, super chat emoji with cool sunglasses. Thank you. Thanks for the support. Oh no, I think it's starting. I just jinxed myself. It's like going to the left slightly. I'm trying to correct. Oh, it's... Could be a lot worse than that. Let's cut this side again. All right. So now you just want to cut these to be like roughly the same size. It's not a super big deal if they're not. I just don't want stuff sliding everywhere. I'm just going to move this over here. Actually, I think I might switch to another knife. So uh, I have, where is this knife? Right here. So I, this is like my favorite knife because it has these holes right here and the holes make it so that it doesn't, the vegetables don't stick to it. Yeah. This is like a vegetable cutting knife, but yeah, I, I really like this knife because since there's holes, it doesn't stick to it. It doesn't get suctioned to the food or the food doesn't get suctioned to it. Gonna grab that out of the garbage. There's basically just banana peels in here. Oh no. Okay, well, I just kept pushing it down further in the garbage, so it's gone now. Alright, and these end pieces, I'm just gonna. Start throwing into the instant pot. Some of them I'm going to cut a little bit smaller. I was just gonna wonder if it tastes like mac and cheese. I would say it tastes like, it tastes very similar to mac and cheese. You can sort of taste the butternut squash. It's not like very overpowering. I think it tastes very good. Um, like I said, like I've made this a bunch of times. I don't make things if I don't like them. Um, and actually I have a friend who is not vegan, but he tried this recipe and he said that he actually likes it more than regular mac and cheese. And this is really the only mac and cheese that he makes anymore. So if that, Helps you with the decision if you, uh, if you want to make it or not. Look at them chunks. Chunky on all chunky and stuff. I'm on my last tablespoon of noodles, guys. Send help. Oh, jeez. My, uh, my heart goes out to you, Jorge. I have new <laughs> Love the shirt, Craig. My daughter has it. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have this shirt. It's a pretty great shirt. Oh, my God. It looks like it's snowing because... All right. So if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my story a while ago. Not even a while ago. It was a couple days ago. when It was it was snowing, but there was um, just like a, a tree that has its blossoms out. And now I think they're like falling. So it looked kind of for a second like it was snowing out just because there was like so many like white blossoms just like flying by my window. But it's like... I don't know, 60 to 70 degrees today. So I was like, there's no way that's snowing. <laughs> I 
All right, so now I'm going to cut this seeded part out, and I typically like to use an ice cream scooper to get the seeds out. We'll use this Ben & Jerry's one that I got from the Ben & Jerry's, not headquarters, but they have some plant up in uh, Vermont somewhere. So I'll just scoop this out. I will show as much as I can before it starts to fall out. And then uh, I'll have to bring it over to the garbage because I don't feel like picking this up. Because <laughs> these seeds can be kind of gross and messy when they fall. I feel like the thing that makes this taste the most like mac and cheese is probably the nooch and the cashews. Because I feel like most of the time it, when you follow a vegan mac and cheese recipe, there's nooch or there's cashews. Or like maybe macadamia nuts or like some, some kind of fatty thing that makes it help taste help the nooch make it taste cheesy. Um, but the I feel like the butternut squash actually helps a lot. So I think somebody asked me, I, they had a typo and they asked if it would work with spaghetti squash. But like, I kind of wonder if it would work with like acorn squash or maybe even spaghetti squash or like, if, does it have to be butternut squash? Like, I don't know, but there's only one way to find out. You just got to do it to it. only so much room on this thing this little island thing so i had like so many i was not sure exactly how i was going to do this live stream with the limitations of like you know how many ingredients i need and um where i want the light to go and plugs and everything because there's a lot of things plugged in right now um originally i was going to like maybe bring in a different table instead but that it was like too hard to move with just me I didn't want to like bash up the wall, so I'm, I think this is probably the best way to do it. Let's see, we got a super chat of two ninety nine from Jenny Ryan. Say, what's it say? First fist bump. Oh, I can't really read from that. So far away. But thank you. Thank you for the support and thank you for the virtual fist bump. Pretty well chopped up. Last one. Twenty more pieces falling in there. <laughs> I'd rather fall on the floor. I should have grabbed a bigger cutting board. I have other cutting boards that are bigger than this. I don't know why I grabbed like the smallest one. <laughs> all right, so got all of our butternut squash in there. That's actually the bulk of the ingredients, which is pretty nice because then it's a you know mostly healthy recipe. Actually, I can't really think of anything that's not healthy in this recipe because I said, uh, like I said earlier, I'm not going to be using any oil, so. Last time I just did two tablespoons of broth instead of two tablespoons of oil. So we'll see how that goes. All right, next I'm going to do this onion all quartered up. I'm going to take the old skin off. All right, so this is how I do onions anyway. Maybe you guys can learn something or you guys can school me. But I take one end off, take another end off, cut it in half. Then I feel like it's, the paper comes off much, much easier if you have it in half. And then I will kind of cut out this little bottom part of the core. And then all you really have to do for the rest, this recipe is just um, quarter it. Because it's okay if you throw stuff in in big chunks because everything is basically going to be cooked way the heck down. Uh, it's going to get all like mushy 
And then you later on will, you could either transfer it to a blender or you could do what I do. And I just use an immersion blender because I feel like that's a lot easier. And you just blend it all up for the sauce. So you got that. I have only memorized some of this recipe, even though I've made it a bunch. Um, so, okay, we got that. And we get a half a cup of cashews. It says raw, but I've done raw and I've done cooked. I don't notice a difference. All right, half a cup of that. Quarter cut, cup of nooch. Sorry, Jorge, don't, need, don't mean to rub it in. And this recipe is like very ballpark. Um, I mean, it, it says one butternut squash. It doesn't even say medium, large, small, whatever. Uh, so I've noticed though, obviously, the larger the uh, squash that you use, the more sauce you have, which is great. Um, and you can usually make like two pounds worth of pasta to go with the sauce. It's pretty great. It goes a long way. So we got one clove of garlic, which I we were out of cloves actually. So. I found out recently, oh, this is a completely full garlic. I have a half, not even half, it's mostly used one. Um, garlic, and let's see, quarter teaspoon is what we're gonna be using. Cause that's equivalent to one clove. Let's see, oh wow, we have a $50 super chat from Uniquely Yours, thank you so much. Hi, Craig. Thanks for the Friday entertainment. And thank you for the comment because I see that you, you send me super chats all the time. And you don't always send me comments. So thank you for the comment. I appreciate that. And I always appreciate your support. So thank you so much. And from Earth, er, I'll have to come over here and read it. <laughs> I got a super chat from er, Earthan. Uh, hi, Craig. Thanks for doing these live cooking shows. Love yours and Hercules videos too. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Like, I, I really appreciate that. Appreciate all the, the kind words to financial support. Like, cause I don't know if I mentioned before, but like YouTubers are getting kind of hit right now with uh, like not making as much money um, just because advertisers don't want to spend as much on advertising. So that means we don't end up making as much money. So I appreciate you guys helping me, supporting me during this time, especially. Um, anyway, so one teaspoon of dried rosemary. Here's a teaspoon. I can only really use these because these have been worn away, so I have to make a best guess of what this measurement is. <laughs> uh, so usually I feel like I'm pretty accurate, but these these purple ones have an engraving of the, the teaspoons, or they're embossed or whatever, so you can actually see it. <sighs> oh my god, I love nutmeg. <sighs> Don't use the whole bottle though, kids. Okay. So, no, half a teaspoon. Wow, it's a good thing I checked that. So, half a teaspoon. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was looking at one teaspoon of dried rosemary, but I grabbed the nutmeg. So, it's half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And this actually really just, I don't know if you can like say this about recipes, but this half a teaspoon of nutmeg just like really makes it pop. Like I said, I don't know if that's a good term that you would use, but it, it just really adds like a nice little extra layer of flavor to it. So one teaspoon of dried rosemary though. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. I don't like it as much as nutmeg, but I do like the smell of rosemary. All right, there we go. And whoa, stupid gravity. The heck embarrassing me i'm in front of all my friends um got the butternut squash got the onion we have the cashews the nooch the garlic the rosemary the nutmeg two tablespoons of olive oil but actually i'm going to be using broth instead this is just vegetable broth from aldi actually so let's see we got one Okay, so that is in place of the oil. One teaspoon of mustard. Just 
just going to use my finger as a spatula. I don't have a small enough spatula. <laughs> it's okay. It's just me and Carrie eating this. We're twins. Basically the same person. Okay. One tablespoon of salt, which probably sounds like a lot, but when you see how much sauce this actually makes, it's really not that much. But if you want to go lower sodium, you absolutely could. This is basically just for flavor. This is not baking, so it's not going to like mess up the recipe. And that's a little bit more than a tablespoon. I don't know how to put... Can I put that back? This might be too... Okay, I'm just going to make a mess. It's just going to taste really good. <laughs> okay. And two cups of vegetable stock. So we're going to use some more of this in my measuring cup. And I got over here, and we're gonna run out of broth, so we have more of this right here. Okay, two cups. Just a little bit less than two cups. And you need at least two cups for the instant pot. Or, yeah, two cups? I think so. Um, I. When I did this with a slow cooker versus Instant Pot, I didn't add any extra liquid and it didn't burn to the bottom. So I think we're all good. All right, two coops. All right, and then I'm gonna write today's date on here. So then if I try to eat this like a month from now, I know um, not to do that. So it's the 15th. Ah, I almost wrote 12. Oh well. I'll just have to know that it's, I'll write it again, 5-15. <laughs> now it's moist, yes, now it's moist. Looking good so far, I'll make this recipe later today. Oh, awesome! There's a difference between volume and weight when handling ingredients, just so you know. Right, there is no, there's no weight, um, there's no weight measurements in this recipe, though. It's all volume. All right, and two cups of vegetable broth, and then we are all done mixing all the ingredients together. So now we just have to plug in the old Instant Pot and get her going. So I'll face this towards you guys. Okay. I should probably grab the top too. <laughs> if I can I think I Oh no, I might need care for this. There we go. I know how to I know how to do it. Okay. Uh pressure cook. I know what I'm doing. And so this, uh, since it's like pretty soft ingredients, um, you're actually only cooking it for four minutes. I mean, I know it has to like get, it has to like get up to pressure or whatever. Um, it's on high pressure too. So I know it has to get up to pressure. What? No. Oh no. I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> start? I click. Just wait. There we go. What's less normal and more? I don't know. Do you guys know how to use an instant pot? I think I'm, I think I did it okay. <laughs> Best part. I'm <laughs> uh, let's see. I am likely just overstressed, but I'm concerned about post collapse cannibalism. <laughs> you can always trust no I cry. <laughs> You read the manual for a legitimate reason. I actually did not read the manual for this. Kara just showed me how to use it. Why are you vegan? So, um, so you're new here, pumpkin. So I'm, I'm assuming that you don't know my story. So now I'll just do a split. So my head's not chopped off. Um, so 19 years old, 19 year old Craig was getting ready for indoor track in college. I started getting slowly weaker and weaker and getting numb, tingling sensation. We couldn't figure out what it was. Fast forward to, I think it was like three months from then, I was misdiagnosed with an autoimmune disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, after being diagnosed with that for a couple of months, 
I just continually got worse and worse. Actually, you know what? I should be talking while I'm adding some water to this pot because I have to boil some noodles. Um, so anyway, like I said, I uh, kept getting worse and worse. I was getting more and more paralyzed. And eventually I just did some of my own research on YouTube and Google and stuff like that, um, which is why I have a YouTube channel. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, I was... I then diagnosed myself with chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, and then I sent an email to my neurologist and said, hey, I actually don't think I have Guillain-Barre syndrome, I think I actually have CIDP, and then he got me in the next day and he was like, yep, you have CIDP. So then he told me that I would have to be on something called uh, IVIG, which stands for intravenous immunoglobulins, which is basically other people's antibodies, because my own antibodies were attacking my peripheral nervous system. So. Uh, he told me that I would have to be on medication for the rest of my life. And I just remember thinking like, nah, I don't think so. It wasn't even like a, oh, n I wasn't thinking like, oh no, like this, this is the rest of my life. Like I'm, I'm going to have to deal with this the rest of my life. I just remember immediately thinking like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm like, eh, that's not the life for me. I don't want to live that kind of life. I'm only 20 years old. I don't want to have to be beholden to a medication for the rest of my life. So then I knew that something was going to have to change as far as my diet goes. Um, I, try, I tried a bunch of different diets and really nothing helped except for when I went vegan. Um, my immune, my autoimmune disease symptoms just, I started recovering a lot faster and I was also on prednisone at the time as well as IVIG and my symptoms from prednisone basically went away within like two weeks. Uh, and everything just like went so much better. And then eventually my neurologist was like, you know what, Craig, you don't need your medication. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but just keep doing it because I never expected you to get off your medication. I never expected you to recover as well as you have. I never expected you to recover, recover as quickly as you had. So just keep doing it. That's all I asked. And she was like, I hope I never see you again. You're a nice kid, but I hope I never see you again in my office. Um, check the pressure level. Yeah. It's on high pressure. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to check. Check the pressure level. It says high pressure. That's what it's supposed to be on. Close the valve. What valve? I, <laughs> yeah, the, the red knob on top, yeah, it's close. Did I do it? <laughs> oh, Charlotte, you're on IVIG drip. El Mayo Giant Craig, what? <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be an event or not. I think, I don't think it's supposed to be sealed. I think it's supposed to be an event. <sighs> Valve tap should be a seal. You sure? All right, well, now it's at the seal. You all need to have faith in Craig. <laughs> you did it. Uh, you look nice and pink, thank you. All right, I sealed it, guys. Guys, don't worry, I sealed it. All right. Because <laughs> I used, um, I made, uh, I cooked dried chickpeas the other day, and I I used the uh, vent thing. But I don't. You guys wouldn't even be able to see it, see it from over there, so I don't know how you guys new to check. I, I don't know if it was. It might have been on vent. It might have been on seal. I actually don't know. I'm here for support. <laughs> yeah, people, yeah, just calm down, yeah. But is the thing on, or do you have to set it up to timer? No, you, so you don't have to set up the timer. I actually already set it to four. Four minutes, so it's actually only going to cook for four minutes, but it has to just like get up to pressure or whatever. Why couldn't I watch any videos yesterday from your channel or Hercules Candy Channel? I don't know. That's weird. 
am hiding in my house for this I think you had on sale if it wasn't used. Yeah, I think I think I did have it on sale. Hi, Craig. I've been considering getting a pressure cooker. Would you recommend getting it? I know your mom uses it a lot. So, um, yeah, if you if you mean instant pots, I I think there's a difference between pressure cooker and um, an instant pot. Um, but if you mean instant pot, then yes, I recommend it because it just helps you cook things so fast. It's pretty great. Woo, for four minutes, <laughs> now I want an Instant Pot too. Yeah, so um, it takes maybe 10 minutes to get up to pressure, four minutes to cook, and then maybe 10 to 20 minutes to vent all the steam off. Um, yeah. So now I will start putting some stuff away. Just you and Karen tonight. Yeah, yeah, she's still at work. Yeah, but uh, hopefully I will have this all cleaned up by the time she comes home. Do you guys like seeing people clean stuff up in their kitchen? So I know that's like a thing. There's like a clean with me thing. I was actually shocked, shocked that people liked watching me and my mom grocery shop. Like I thought maybe it would be like a one type video, but then it turned out to be like everyone's favorite. Would you guys want to see a live stream of me washing the dishes? <laughs> I'm getting a cat tomorrow. Hopefully you need a name. Oh, cool. This is amazing. <laughs> Plugs in traditional pressure cooker, usually stove top. I don't have any counters. How about the floor? Actually, so when I was in Ethiopia, um, they uh, didn't, sometimes they wouldn't have a counter or anything to like cut uh, anything on. So they just had a cutting board and shoot, they were just like cutting stuff on the ground. Um, and I found that, like in Ethiopia, they were just like very, they were a very scrappy people. Like if they were like, all right, we need to get this thing done. It may not be like the most convenient way to do it, but as long as the thing gets done, that's all we care about. And I, I, I really admired that. Like I feel like in America, they're just like, oh, well, it would really suck to have to do that. So I'm just going to not. All right. Um, I feel like I have so much more room in here now, now that I don't have this thing in the middle. <laughs> Shopping video is my favorite, and, Ethio and uh, grocery hauls. You went to Ethiopia? I'm sorry if you get a thousand burns there. No, it was, it was pretty fun. I had a really good time. Really good time. Oh, yeah, Effervescent Bubble says, thank you for the $50 super chat. Again, thank you. Th thank you. Thank you. Uniquely yours. Um, just bought an instant pot. That's cool, Lexi. I want to go to Ethiopia. Yeah, Ethiopia is pretty cool. How old am I? Well, I keep getting older, but at the moment I'm 28. I like people organizing stuff. I was watching a video of someone organizing their pantry before the live stream. You can do all kinds of activities now. <laughs> Karma and a baking aisle. Um, so have you guys been seeing, uh, maybe it's just like the stuff that I like on Instagram, but I've been seeing ads a lot of on Instagram for something called Masterclass, which I, I think is called, it's kind of like Skillshare, except for it's like professional, like, because anybody can do Skillshare. 
but it seems like for master class they have like olympic athletes like world renowned like authors and painters and like any like just like world class people teaching stuff i've been thinking about getting that as well as skillshare um so has any have any of you guys checked that out or have you guys checked out like udemy or like any other like learning platform since you guys have um had a lot of time off and are you guys like learning anything cool and new um and thank you again for the the super chat marie foos thank you you didn't say anything but i appreciate you being here send me a super chat supporting me i really appreciate that thank you keep up the donations and craig is out of a job <laughs> drank moonshine <laughs> Very much enjoy your videos. This is helping us make more vegan dishes. Oh, cool. That's, oh, so that, that's probably what you wanted to write. Uh, very much enjoy your videos. This is helping us make more vegan dishes. Is there any sort of vegan dish that you would like to see veganized that you haven't seen on my channel yet? Uh, is Syracuse a good city? Would you suggest people move there? It depends, like, what you want. Like, so there's a lot of cool places to hike around here. Um, yeah, this is on Seal. So it's still coming out, though. Trust me. You're just going to trust me on that. Vent is next to it. Uh, suggestions for a beginner DSLR. So it depends what you want to, it depends what you want to shoot. Um, if you just want to get into photography and see if you like it, if you want to get into making videos, I would definitely suggest just using your phone. I know you just asked about beginner DSLR, but if that's, if you're just seeing if you want to get into it, I would suggest spending no money and just seeing if you like it. Um, and then after that, uh, I know the Canon Rebel series is really great. Nikon has some really great ones. Um, Sony has some pretty good ones. I mean, there's, I guess it kind of depends what sort of lens systems you want to go with, because typically if you get uh, Canon, Nikon, or Sony, you're probably going to want to stick with it for a while, um, because switching over from one lens system to another can be kind of expensive. Um, like I went from Canon to Sony, and then I just uh, recently sold uh, actually my camera, my lenses to John, uh, John Tad from the Vegan Zombie. You know, he or he was part of the Vegan Zombie. Now he's his own channel. Actually tried the gravy last night. Add vinegar, and it makes a great poutine gravy toppy. Oh, cool! Bonjour, Craig. Yeah, caught a live stream again. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm roasting yams and Brussels sprouts while listening. Oh, cool. Drink moonshine means you need to drink, Craig. <laughs> Uh, have you ever been raw vegan? Would you? Yeah. So actually, when I first went vegan for the first like nine months or so, I actually was raw vegan. Um, and after a while, oh, you know, it looks like these bow ties can go in. This is all boil it up. Uh, but yeah, after a while, I uh, like I I still felt great. Um, I didn't do it long enough to the point where I didn't feel good on a raw vegan diet. But um, it was just getting kind of expensive, and I was a college student, and I was just like, you know what? We're going into winter. And I would basically only be able to eat bananas and oranges, and I would be paying like $100 a week to do that. <laughs> so I was like, well, let's not do that. Let's uh, have some more variety and just eat some like more cooked food. And, um, and when I first started doing that, because like when I first went vegan, I was raw vegan, and like my autoimmune disease was like doing great. Um, and I was actually really nervous to start eating cooked food again because I was like, well, what I've been doing has been working. Like, what if I change it and I you know, my autoimmune disease gets worse and it didn't. And then eventually I was like, all right, I'm eating cooked food, but like, can I start incorporating gluten? And I started incorporating gluten and I was like really worried and then no changes. Um, and then I started eating some junk food and I was like, oh no, like what's going to happen to my autoimmune disease and actually still no changes. I mean, I, I still try to eat like relatively healthy. Um, but, uh, I definitely would not say that I followed the daily dozen from Dr. Greger perfectly. <laughs> um, I definitely just eat what I want to. And, you know, I try to eat my fruit, my vegetables, my greens and stuff. But I'm not like, I don't know, I'm not crazy about it. Just try to enjoy my life and eat relatively healthy. You tried the bagel bar for the first time today. Do you like it? <laughs> Thank you. It's been such a restrict, uh, transition still within, still in gluten withdrawal. Yeah, I've been there. Oh, so now it's going to start cooking because it was basically, um, just getting pressure until recent, until just now. 
would love some homemade veggie burgers. We have started using Beyond Burgers instead of meat. Good or good, but would love to make our own veggie version. So there's there's a couple different types of veggie burgers that you can make. So there's one that I really like that it doesn't taste exactly like a burger, but it just tastes good in between um, buns and it um, has sort of. I don't know, it, it just tastes good between bread. That's it. But, um, the main ingredients are like beans and oats, um, ketchup, mustard, garlic powder, onion powder. I think that's about it, almost. That might be it. Uh, but it's it's actually it's really good. Um, but it doesn't taste like Beyond Meat, obviously. But if you were to do that, I would definitely look up like a seitan recipe. So that is with vital wheat gluten, which I don't think we have in here. I think it might be in this room over here. Maybe I can... If I can find it, oh, oh, yeah, I think this is it. So, sometimes it's kind of hard to find. I believe we got this at Wegmans. If not, we might have just gotten it on the Amazons, um, but just Vital Wheat Gluten, Bob's Red Mill. There's no particular brand that you have to get. That's just the brand that we got. Um, yeah, so that will really mimic um, meat quite well. So I would definitely look up a gluten recipe. I could maybe make a recipe like that on my channel. Um, I would just have to look up a recipe and experiment. And I'm sure that Kara would be fine with me experimenting with uh, seitan burgers. <laughs> uh, what is the furthest distance you've run? Um, I think when I was in college. Okay, so when I was in college, I only ran cross country my freshman year. And then there is just complicated, but I didn't run cross country. I ran cross country like kind of unattached my sophomore year. Um, and I was getting ready for indoor and then it became paralyzed. So <laughs> my running career was kind of cut short, but in uh, my freshman year of college, I ran 15 miles. And um, when I was 14, actually my, my, uh, my next longest run, I think was when I was 14, I ran 14 miles. <laughs> and then I think when I was like 18, I ran 15. But I was mostly a middle distance runner. So like running like uh, 800 meters, um, mostly, and I would do pretty well around like 50 miles a week, um, much more than that. And I would kind of like start to get injured and stuff. So I was never really like a high mileage kind of guy. What size instant pot do you have? Don't know. <laughs> Kara might know that because she was the one who was like, uh, doing all the research to get it. Not all dark chocolate is vegan. Yes, it's true. I really love butternut squash 100%, and thank you um, for answering my question. I really love watching Hercules Candy every every day, and I subscribe to both channels. I have turned on my notifications. Oh, well, thank you. I'm back. Start over. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to have you back, Linda. Can you give me a quick breakdown on the recipe you are making for those of you who joined late? So I took a butternut squash, chopped it up, stuck it in there. I'm going to see how much I can remember from memory. Um, that's how my brain works, right? Um, one onion quartered, two cups of vegetable broth, one teaspoon of mustard, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, a half a teaspoon of rosemary, um, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, half a cup of cashews, two cups of broth. Did I say that? I think that that might be it actually. And I just threw it in there. Got some bow ties cooking on the stove top. Should probably turn this down a little bit so it doesn't boil over. How embarrassing would that be? Um, and it sounds like it's actually done cooking right now. Um, so then we just have to wait for it to vent off the top. These are definitely not done yet. And I think I'm gonna take a water break. We've got a water fountain installed. What if we do not have an instant pot? Can you use a typical saucepan? Um, you probably could, although I would definitely recommend a slow cooker. Um, that's how I actually originally got this recipe was from a slow cooker. Uh, and then I just switched it to an instant pot. Um, so it's, I think, four hours on high in slow cooker or eight hours on low. Um, but you probably could do it on the stovetop. It would just probably use up a lot of gas. <laughs> How long did it take once it was in the instant pot? Four minutes. That sounded weird. 
I just can't get over how fast it is. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's nuts. Did your hot water get fixed? Yes, it did. Yes. So our hot water got fixed. We have light up here again. We have light out there. I think that was the only things really that need to get fixed around our house. But it was like once, once this whole crisis hit, everything in our kitchen just started falling apart. <laughs> but how moist was the water? Uh, well, it's vegan water, so pretty moist. What if you don't have a typical saucepan? Can I use an instant pot? Or how about a not instant pot? I, I think you could get away with it, but there's only one way to find out, man. Hello from Santa Barbara. Hello from New York. It was pretty fast, I guess. He used a sharp knife this time. Yeah, so we have a bunch of sharp knives now. Oh, snap, I forgot all about the slash. I'm glad I caught it now. Yeah, so welcome, Chad. We are just waiting for the noodles to boil, for this to finish venting. And actually, I should clear out this one side of the sink so that I can... Ah! Loud noises. Yeah. So I can drain the pasta. So this is something I've been thinking about for next week. I was thinking of either doing energy balls. Or there's, there's this one idea. I don't know if I want to do this, so don't hold me to it because I don't even know if I want to do this. But I was thinking of doing like a live workout with no no weights or anything so you guys would be able to follow along with me and I would be willing to take suggestions and then like we could all decide how we want to torture ourselves uh, like what kind of push-ups or like what type of uh, squat workout or what type of type of anything and I would like to be really no um, no weights or anything just because there's a lot of people who don't have weights and still want to get a workout in so you know I would like to help those people as well. How is the mac and cheese? Don't know yet, actually. It's still cooking, but you will find out if you stick around. Yes, the sharp knives were a Christmas present. Oh, wow, you, you pay attention. <laughs> Live workout for sure. Sounds like fun. Yes, right now. Because um, I know people, uh, I'm not like a fitness channel, so I'm not sure how many people would be interested. Although I'm, I'm sure like the people who show up for these live streams, I think... Not lying, I'm not working out, but I will snap and chips while you do. Um, yeah, so it wouldn't be like a hit workout. I would, I would want. Well, maybe I could start it with that, but then I would, I would want to do like um, an actual like. I I would say weights, but there's not going to be any weights involved. So like a muscle workout, I guess. <laughs> a body weight workout, maybe. Didn't you buy the same knives for your parents? Yeah, so we bought some knives for our parents, and then they. They uh, did some, they, they, I'm reading some awesome comments. I bought some knives for my parents and they bought us some knives. Uh, live workout, I can't even do a push up, so I need a reason to get active. Yeah, so actually there's a lot of things that you can do if you can't do a push up. I don't know if you guys can, yeah, you guys can see me as long as I don't trip over that cord. So if you can't do a push up on your, um, on your feet, you can always do them on your hands like this. And if you still can't even do that, you could always grab either a wall or something like this. And then you can, if you want to work on your chest, you can grab it kind of wide and go like this, push off. And if you want to work on your triceps, then, which would be even more difficult, then you just go like this. And if you need it to be less difficult, you can just walk in so it's closer. And there's just like so many things that you can change so that it makes things easier and make it more manageable for yourself. Don't forget the green screen. I will not. Uh, but once, yeah, once it's out, uh, once this comes out and I start eating it, I will break out the green screen. Oh, and someone even mentioned, I think it was way earlier in this live stream, that I should do the, the Golden Girls uh, kitchen for the background. I think that would be pretty great. Energy balls would be great. I make a batch every once in a while, put them in the freezer, and have them on, on hand anytime I get the munchies. Yeah, they're pretty great. Counterproductive. Do some dips while making dips. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had like a... Um, I wish I had like a pull-up bar. I'm just because we rent, and I'm oh, you know, what? I don't even, I don't need, uh, do, 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 do. I don't need that anymore. I don't think. So I will just face this this way. Um. All right. Let's just answer all your questions. Golden girl backdrop. I'm loving your hair. This link. Thanks. Me too. I'm. I'm definitely growing it out. I think it, it definitely looks better. I don't know how long I want to grow it out. I don't know if I want to grow it out long enough to be in like a man bun or like ponytail 
or if I just want it to be like maybe around this length forever, you know? But it is nice to actually have something to grab onto instead of before I, there was like nothing. Because I feel like I was born with really good hair genes and it's about time I start embracing them, you know? He was a skater boy, she said, see you later, boy, it doesn't go enough for her. <laughs> Please don't do a man bun, <laughs> catching up on Max's hair. Uh, he's the next Fabio. <laughs> uh, oh, someone likes my longer hair. <laughs> it does look good long. Thank you, thank you. I was thinking you should do an emo style uh, because of Avril. Oh yeah, like so. This was this was me and Max, and okay, so my hair was even longer in like middle school, but this was me and Max, like all throughout middle school. Like, I was just a skater boy like that. Well, I didn't skate. I maxed it a little bit, but I had my hair like a skater boy. Embracing the jeans. <laughs> Hi, Craig. How is Schmorn Schmeen going for you? It's going pretty great, actually. I'm growing my hair out. I'm getting more active on my YouTube channel. Um, not on the Hercules one, because I've been getting so many orders, actually, when my mom told me to slow down. Um, but I've been more active on here. I've been doing live streams every Friday. If you're here to check them out. Uh, I've been doing, yeah, I do like a video every week or so. I think last, so this last week I did one, but the week before that I didn't, I think. But I've been trying to do one about every week or so. No man <laughs> The typical emo hair flip. Yeah, yeah. Now I like I like pushing it back though. I like that my hair is long enough that I can actually just push it back, which is nice. Because like having the in-between hair where you can't do that is not as fun. Ordered watermelon candy. Woo! Yeah, it's pretty good. I like that stuff. I shouldn't eat too much of it though. Um, oh, yeah, so what else have I been doing in quarantine? Oh, man, I forgot about these noodles. They are probably a little overcooked. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to turn it off first. Yeah, when it comes to pasta, I, like, never set a timer. I usually don't forget about it, though, because I'm usually not doing live turns when I cook pasta. <laughs> so it's usually not a problem not to set a timer. Oh, they're not really overcooked. They're fine. They could probably actually cook a little bit longer, even. <laughs> Time to use a timer. I will never. Uh, I just got an email that the vegan peanut brittle is available. Cool. Been waiting for weeks to order. Yeah, that that the chocolate covered uh, brittle is very good. I envisioned the level 100 vegan Craig with long flowing locks and a big old beard. <laughs> what kind of pasta did you cook? I made um, bow tie pasta. Um, and then Tony asked me what books I've been reading. I've been listening to an audiobook called um, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I'm reading a novel on my Kindle called Red Winter, um, which is pretty good. And I'm also still reading, which I haven't read in the past couple of days, but I'm still reading um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I also read, um, before that, like I finished these books, I finished The Power of Habit, um, the Alchemist and The Richest Man in Babylon, which is, I don't think I've ever read that many books in a year. And I've already read it in like the past, I don't know, a month or so. <laughs> for folly, not bow tie. Eh, bow tie or for folly, whatever you want to call it. I call it bow tie. I thought I had good hair jeans. Then I turned 50 and, well, where did it go? <laughs> it's there, but thinner. Yeah, I'm, I hopefully will have still good hair when I'm 50 because my dad is in his 60s and he has a full head. And then his father uh, was in his, I don't know if he's in his 70s when he died or something like that, but he had a full head too. I'm pretty sure his head, father had a full head. Everyone in the family had a full head. Don't forget the pasta. You know, I know. I just checked it a minute ago. You mentioned that you had some videos uh, you watched to speed up your reading. I can't remember what videos you mentioned, uh, if you linked them. Oh, okay, so the ones I definitely recommend are by a channel um, that is run by a guy named Tim Ferriss. So I think 
the channel is just called Tim Ferriss. And honestly, if you just type in Tim Ferriss speed reading, it'll pop right up. Um, and then Sorel Amore um, on YouTube as well, which is a great channel that I really like. like I just recommend both those channels. I mean, I'm subscribed to Sorel Amore. I'm not subscribed to Tim, but I'm sure that Tim has some pretty great content. I'm just familiar with his work. This is the bow tie. Ah, yeah, that's done. She done. Yeah, the uh, the recipe in the instant pot is so much faster that um, the bow ties actually, the bow ties and the mac and cheese I found cook around roughly the same time. Like the mac and cheese should be out really any minute now. But it used to be like when I did it with the instant, or the slow cooker, it took forever. Obviously it's a slow cooker. Are you venting the squash? Yeah. It's on your mom's side, I think. Well, I don't know, because my mom doesn't have the thickest hair, but I, I do. Kara has, Kara had su such thick hair, or still has such thick hair that it like gives her problems. Like when she was in uh, high school, there was other girls who would race her, and they would call her like the braid girl because she had a braid that was like this, this thick around. So I'm, I've heard people say it's on the mom's side, but I don't know what to tell you, but it's not on my mom's side, but I definitely got the thick hair, Dean. The squash is venting. Had a stressful day. <laughs> Steve gave his hair and mom gray. Gave him his power. <laughs> Are you doing natural venting? <laughs> no, like Jane said, the squash had a rough day at work. I'm just letting it vent, you know? It's just, all right. It's venting more now. But uh, it was, you can do it either way. I think it'll probably be faster, though, if you do it like this. I've used the Instant Pot two, this is like my third time now. It's the balding that's predominantly on the mom's side. Thickness and texture is more of a mixed thing. Oh, okay. Did your mom's dad have a lot of hair? No, he was bald. <laughs> What's up, Craig? I'm not a vegan, but I don't know. Curiosity gets to me. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to give up meat. Call me Danny. All right, Danny. What, make, what makes you think you can't give up meat? Um, cause I, I can tell you from experience that pretty much every vegan has probably been there at some point in their life. Like, if someone told me like eight years ago that I was going to be vegan, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Why would I do that? Yeah, I don't know what to tell you guys, but I don't think that I'm going to be going bald, whether it's on the mom's or dad's side. I I don't know. I just can't see this much hair going away anytime soon. I, I hope. I hope so. I'm just knocking on wood. I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> Edward Collin vibes. Think you're okay yeah uh, I wouldn't know what to eat if I was vegan so I mean I didn't know what to eat before I went vegan but it's just like anything else like you learn like you probably didn't know what it's like to drive a car but you can probably probably drive a car now you probably had no idea what it was like to ride a bike until you rode a bike it's like the same thing like if you, you have no idea what you would eat as vegan until you're vegan and then you look up recipes and you're like oh it's not that hard it's just it's just food I found Tim Ferriss videos, couldn't 
find her. So her, I'll just type in, I don't know if this is exactly how to spell Sorel Amore, but I think it's like something like that. If you type that in, it'll, she'll probably pop up. But yeah, if you type in Sorel Amore, speed reading, that'll probably pop up. Your body will crave healthy foods and stop craving meat after a bit. Yeah, so it's partially like your, um, I don't know a whole lot about this, but it's partially that your um, taste buds change and then partially also like I know that your microbiome changes. So your microbiome, I think, also dictates what you will eat based on what you have eaten. So if you have been eating junk food, you're gonna the your microbiome is going to crave more junk food. But if you've been eating healthier, your body's going to start craving eating healthier food. So whatever you start to eat is what your body starts to crave. So that's why when people... Um, will either start a low salt diet then after a while they're like, oh wow I can really taste the salt in this and then like they don't really want to have things that are super salty Same thing with like people who uh, will give up sugar for like 30 days or something like that um, Then after a while they're like I don't even miss it because they don't even have the preference for it anymore Everyone's obsessed with your hair. Yeah <laughs> uh, I want to go vegan you can definitely do it AJ a a a J Jackson you can, you can do it. If I can do it, then you can definitely do it. I was exploring vegan lifestyle since 2008 or so, and I took it serious back in January to be vegan. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. It's hard to imagine changing something you were raised to believe and you had done your whole life. Yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. Because um, I, I was there. That was, you know, that was that's basically the story of every vegan. Like, you know, you... you Unless you were raised vegan, which is like a very small minority of people, um, you know, you have eaten meat and dairy your whole life, and it's just a huge change. But uh, then once you do it, you're like, oh, it wasn't as scary as I thought. Do you watch Freely? No, I used to when I first started, but that was a sort of cringy time in my life that I tried to forget. I'm not vegan either, but for some reason, I just love Craig's videos. I've been tempted just to try it. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, no matter what, if people are vegan or not, I'm just flattered that they just like my videos. So thank you. I became lactose intolerant and severely allergic to gluten all in a week's time. So I'm learning it all day by day. I'm hungry all the time. LOL. Never thought I would be vegan ever. So I get it. Yeah, no, it, it um... It definitely takes time um, and just like figuring out the recipes that you like. It's just trial and error. Like there's going to be recipes that you love and there's going to be recipes that you hate. <laughs> uh, just like with any any new type of diet. Um, but yeah, I mean, just trial and error and then you'll you'll just find the ones that you like. And then yeah, like I make this recipe all the time. <laughs> I made uh, like my lasagna recipe. I make that one all the time. Well, when I say all the time, I mean like. Uh, once a month <laughs> usually i'm just making like for breakfast i'll have like oatmeal or cereal if i have a bunch of bananas going bad maybe i'll make a smoothie um i just had like a protein shake smoothie with bananas after my workout because i just needed something quick um and i'll eat like a lot of spaghetti uh rice beans and vegetables some frozen stuff like i had uh what do we get we got some yeah, we got like some uh, frozen vegetable dumplings. They're super, super good, super easy to make. You just throw them in a pot of boiling water and then you're done. Um, like there's actually a lot of really easy things. Actually, pretty much all the recipes on my channel are very easy to do. So if you're looking for some very easy recipes, then just check out the ones on my channel because I don't really like spending that much time in the kitchen. So if it's on my channel, you can almost guarantee that it's not going to be very difficult because I'm not a master chef. Let's see, does this look, does it actually make things brighter if I turn off this light? I know that sounds dumb, but as far as cameras go, no, it doesn't. Oh, no, no, no. okay. It was because I think, like, the camera's got to auto-correct for that. Maybe, what if I turn off this light? <laughs> nope, that was way worse. <laughs> Oh, cool. I think it's done. I'll take it off in a second. I just want to read some of these comments. Uh, 
I will do it. I think to cut out meat and dairy over time, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. So you can do it over. You could do it slowly over time. You can do it overnight. Whatever you want to do, because it's it's your life, and you're the one who's gonna have to stick with it. So whatever is gonna be manageable and sustainable for you, that's all that really matters. Don't listen to anybody else. Just do do what you gotta do to make it happen. Have to go back to work. Well, thank you, Mar Marie. Thanks for being here. And I will catch you on the flippity flip. Um, Jane sent another super chat uh, for $25. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Craig, use this to send uh, Vegan Life Carrie 08 a, a sample of Hercules candy since she wants to try. Just get in touch with Craig Carrie, I guess, on Instagram info, paying it forward. Craig, let me know if you need more uh, for shipping. Yeah, so. Uh, okay, uh, Carrie, just send me a message on Instagram and we'll hook you up. Thank you, Jane, <laughs> for uh, paying it forward. My audience is, you guys are just so nice to each other. Okay, so let's switch this back to two cameras and let's uh, do our best not to get this camera all uh, steamed up and whatnot. Woo! That is cooked. If I can, there we go. You guys see all that? There's this back part here that gets filled up with water, too. Oh, that's not really that filled up, though. Oh, maybe I should have left it because it looks like it's turned empty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so you can probably see just how cooked a lot of that stuff is. It's like, I don't know, just super cooked and only four minutes. That's nuts. Like, I was kind of shocked when my mom told me how um, how cooked stuff gets in just a couple minutes. I was like, Mom, no, it can't be four minutes. That's nuts. I don't believe you. Okay, so let's grab the immersion blender. Oh, geez, a loo. Oh, it's raining outside. It's, you, guys, you guys probably couldn't hear that, but there's some thunder rolling out there. Good thing I have a house. You know, I'm always just, like, grateful for, like, things that kind of seem like a given. Like, just, I'm just really glad I have a house. I'm glad I have you guys to hang out with during this. Like, doing this definitely makes me feel more connected to other human beings. Okay, let's plug her in, because she won't be very useful. I don't plug her in. All right. It's pretty quiet. Can, I see, can you guys see the blade moving? Let's bump it up to two. Wow. All right. make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better and then I will move it to down here so you can yeah so what I'm trying to do basically is I'm trying to push stuff down and then once it's submerged then turn it on because otherwise if you do it like right here it's just gonna go everywhere and this is still very hot stuff so I recommend not getting it everywhere because it can cause some burns. all the chunks. Once all the chunks are gone, you're good. Wow, 
Oh, some loud thunder. I don't think you guys can hear that from this microphone, but it's some loud thunder. Jeez, a little. A few birds never hurt anybody. Ever rem remember to like? Yes, thank you. Appreciate that. This looks like it's getting uh, pretty, pretty swassy. You know, if you're into swassy swass. Woo! Wow, this uh, this sauce has got some attitude. I definitely have gotten a couple like little flecks of things getting sprayed onto me, but nothing, nothing too bad. You guys didn't even notice. I'm just, I just have a crazy pain tolerance. I'm just kidding. I don't. I'm basically a wimp. But um, <laughs> I feel like everyone I talk to is always like, "Yeah, I got a really high pain tolerance." Like, I don't know. Mine's pretty average, guy. <laughs> I would say like for for workouts and like self-inflicted pain, as far as like how many push-ups or whatever can you do? Like, I feel like my pain tolerance there is like pretty good, just because of running. Because like. So the thing that I think that makes running one of the most difficult sports, like running, biking, cycling, like anything where it's just like an endurance sport is because you are the only one responsible for your pain. It's not like if you're wrestling someone and like someone has you in like a headlock or like in like some painful thing, like someone else is basically responsible for that pain. Like, yeah, you can tap out, but like and if you're running or cycling or biking, like you can always go faster. It's just how much pain are you willing to put yourself into? And that's why I think it's like one of the most difficult because like I said, you are the sole person responsible for your pain. So it just depends how much pain you're willing to go through. So from that, I feel like my workout pain tolerance is relatively high. But as far as like if I were to cut myself or something or break a bone, I would probably be a bit of a wimp. <laughs> Why is running painful? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, self-directed love sprints running longer than three miles is not fun for me. <laughs> yeah, people are always gonna like what they're good at. Like, so I feel like distance runners only like running distance because they can't sprint. Uh, and then I think people, everyone else just likes sprinting because it's so much shorter and it doesn't suck as much. Um, I think that's the the reason. Wow. Okay, you guys hear that? That was a kind of louder one. Um, but uh, I, I was kind of like in between distance and sprints. Like I I never had like a super lot of like top end speed or anything, so I couldn't do like the hundred or two hundred. And I also wasn't the best at like the two mile. But uh, like the mile or the eight hundred, which is like basically a half a mile, that's where I really shined. All right. Try some bow ties. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably just going to be better off using oh, some tongs. I'm a hungry boy. I'm going to do a Big old bowl. Big old bowl of pasta. Oh, yeah, so I've heard like Canadian people say pasta, and I thought it was I thought they were like joking at first, and I was like, oh, that's actually how they pronounce it up there. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I think I heard like vegan gains one time say pasta, and I was like, no, you're kidding. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's not. <laughs> But I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure there's stuff that I say that people are like, you kid? You, you kidding right now? Um, all right, so let's set up my um, little makeshift table. Oh, I got some butternut squash on the ground. Grab another chair. And I will have to pull up the comments on my phone because I will not be able to see the computer from that far away. 
is that your comments are not that big. Let's see, should I do a battery swap? Let's see what the battery is at right now. Uh, yeah, I'll do a battery swap. All right, so I'm going to disappear for a second, but I'll be right back. Let's see. I've got a couple batteries out here. One of them's dead, one of them's not. So I got a 50 50 shot right here. Forgot which one I took out earlier. Let's see. Oh, all right. We've got 98%. So we're good, I think. I just have to situate my laptop. Whoa. You guys hear that one? You had to have heard that one. Okay, I don't know if my Sony has Let's deactivate that and then reactivate it. Yeah, there we go. We're back. All right, we're back in business. All right, just have to level this out. And grab the old green screen. Let's see, maybe I should turn it like this. I don't know if I should have it sideways or like that. Oh, we got another super chat from Jane. Uh, this should cover shipping, Craig. Keep the rest for your channel. I forgot that YouTube takes a percentage. Yeah, so they take, I think, 30% of my um, Super Chat. So thank you. And I'm sure Carrie will thank you. <laughs> All right, so now we have to put a filter on here. I think I already have a filter. I just have to turn it on. There we go. And then now I have to download an image of the Golden Girls Kitchen. And thank you, by the way, Jane, for just sticking around all the time. And uh, let's see, Sandra's always here. Linda's always here. Wajita's always here. <laughs> oh, this is a good shot. I like this. This is a good one. Okay. Save him a jazz. Okay. Now I just have to add image here. All right, and put this behind here, and there we go. Oh, whoops, what did I just do? Come on, there we go. All right, so I have to make this a little bit bigger, and I think I am going to turn this sideways. Hmm. All right, I guess we'll have to go with this. Spread this out a little. Wow. I'm in the Golden Girls kitchen. How cool is that? All right, now we're just going to crop this in a little bit. Oh no, am I gonna get chopped my head chopped off? Okay, let's see. Okay, maybe I have to just back up a lot. Okay, and then I can move the camera up.
Okay, my head stopped off. <laughs> you guys are seeing me edit this live. Alright, I'll just zoom out. Oh my god, I have to keep... Come on. All right, this has got to work now. Okay, that's good enough. All right, and I think we can just turn off this camera. There we go. Hold on. There. All right, that's good enough for me. <laughs> All right, now I need to move this kitchen and get a uh, fork out. And I think you're supposed to, we're supposed to garnish this with parsley, but I don't have any. So we're just gonna not. <sighs> okay, now I gotta pull up the live stream on my phone so I can see your guys' comments over here. All right. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Oh my god, this looks so good. I don't dare try to like mix this around too much because I'm, I'm at like a weird angle. It's just going to fall. <laughs> I know it. I can see it happening. Ooh, yes. This is what good mac and cheese sounds like. I love Golden Girls. My favorite. It looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite character? I would definitely say my favorite character is Sophia. All right, looks like it's all pretty well covered. Let's see, this is too hot. It's not too hot. It's still hot though. Missed most of the live, love the shirt, love the background. It's in Florida, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that Golden Girls took place in Florida, right? This looks delicious. I never had squash. Can you describe kind of what it tastes like? Um, I guess it would be sort of like similar to a sweet potato, but not really. Um, I guess that's the closest thing I can think of that's not squash. <laughs> Betty White is queen. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, someone just said, where's the hot sauce? It actually, in my opinion, tastes very good with Frank's. You know what? I should get out some soy milk. All right, rapid fire. I want to know what everyone's favorite plant milk is. Do you guys like... Oat milk, soy milk, almond milk, cashew milk, what, what do you like? Or what do you, what do you buy most of the time? Because I do like macadamia nut milk, but it's just so expensive, I can't justify buying it. Fee, fi, fo, fum, it's me, Giant Craig. Almond for sure. Well, while wow, I'm rinsing almond, um, oat milk. So yeah, I like the soy milk too. It's my my go-to. Oh, your videos made me fall in love with vanilla milk. That's all I buy myself. Oh, that's that's cool. Coconut milk. I think you're the first one to say coconut milk. Oh, a big bite. Yeah, someone said they saw a gallon of Franks. My mom actually used to buy the gallon of Franks, and then we just like refill one of these bottles. Craig, have you turned into a girl yet from drinking your soy milk? Yes. It's me, Craigina. 
Rice milk. Okay, I think you're the first person to say rice milk. Rice milk. Giant crag needs a tiny bowl. Are the noodles vegan? Yes. I don't know if you're kidding or not. But there's actually a lot of people who um, don't know that um, most pasta is actually vegan. No, it's mukbang, yeah. <laughs> That's a very feminine beard. Yeah, thank you. That's what I'm going for. Oh, how embarrassing. I was just focusing on the Franks. Yeah, if I have anything in front of me, it just focuses on that. Because of your $30 vegan a week and showed how easy it was to make oat milk, I prefer oat. Oh. oh, cool. I got to run, love watching it. Oh, thanks for stopping by, cranky girl. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to try this with the hot sauce. Wasn't kidding, I didn't know. Yeah, so there's actually a lot of people that think that um, most noodles have eggs in them, and actually most don't. Uh, you do have to keep your eye out, though, for like certain types of noodles, but most pasta doesn't. I think homemade pasta might call for it, um, but as far as store-bought pasta, as far as I know, I think it's just like durum, wheat, semolina, and water. I think that's really it, usually. Actually, I will go grab the box for this. I'm going to put it out there. No, it's right there. I see it. Oh, that's actually really good with the hot sauce. Yeah, this is just organic durum wheat semolina. That's it. <laughs> There's not even water. Just a tiny bit of hot sauce. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not very spicy hot sauce. I feel like Frank's Red Hot is like the hot sauce for people who don't like hot sauce. Does Hercules Candy have gift cards? Yes, we do. I think you can buy them online too. I guess that probably would have been the easier route than sending me money and then buying it for someone else, but it works. I didn't think of that even. Uh, I just can't with the hot sauce on mac and cheese, but I put sriracha on a lot of other things. Oh, okay. That's really good, though. I have the same mason jar cup. Oh, cool. Yeah, this... Uh, let's, I haven't even reviewed what this tastes like exactly. Hold on. It's creamy. And you would expect it to be like very fatty. Well, I guess only, there's cashews in it, but it's not a whole lot of cashews. It's like surprisingly cheesy for something with no cheese. <laughs> Is this your dinner? Yeah, probably. Well, actually, it's 4.30. I'm probably going to eat again later. I don't know. I'll probably try to eat some fruit or vegetables or something because I basically had some raisin bran with a banana today. I had a protein shake with more bananas and some spinach. Um, and then I had some homemade hummus with some corn chips. Yeah. I think that's all I eat today. So, like I said, I'll probably try to eat some more fruits or vegetables or something tonight. With leftover chili if there is any. Yeah, I think there I think there is, unless Kara ate it. But I think she was saving it for me because she had a bunch. Very snacky day. Yeah. My days have been kind of snacky since I've at, I'm just at home all the time. <laughs> Do you eat meals more or snacks? I would say when there is no schmore and schmean, I'm more of a meal eater, but now I'm just like, well, I'm home all day. So like a lot of times I'm like, I don't feel like cooking, so then I'll just have little snacks of whatever's around. Bananas are a fabulous source of potassium. Yeah, so I know everyone knows that bananas are full of potassium, um, but uh, bananas, I think, have more vitamin B6, manganese, and maybe copper or something like that, which is also a nutrient that we all need. But 
they actually have more percentage of your daily value of what you need of those than potassium. But it's basically just marketing that everyone thinks potassium when they think of bananas. It's kind of like, you know, when you think of vitamin C, you think of like orange, oranges. But I'm pretty sure kiwi actually has more vitamin C. But it, again, it's just marketing. Not that those things are bad. I like bananas. And I like oranges. <laughs> Everyone is grazing now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I had four bananas today. One in my cereal, and then three in a smoothie. I need one of those green screens for my actual kitchen, though. <laughs> yeah. After this drink, I'm going to cook pasta. Nice. Did I get you in the mood for pasta? <laughs> right, bananas and oatmeal. Yeah, that's good too. Um, I like bananas and oatmeal for like overnight oats. Um, I've been liking, um, so I haven't made overnight oats in a while, but maybe I should make some tonight for tomorrow. Um, I make, I like making like pumpkin pie one with like pumpkin pie filling. Um, pumpkin pie spice with bananas is really good though too. Or like blue frozen blueberries. It's like some cinnamon. That's really good. Craig, I believe what you meant to say is it's good. Mm-hmm. That was a translation. That's what I really meant. Really? I didn't know all oh, blah blah blah. I know banana have all that. I have to eat one for when I get leg cramps. Uh, it tells me uh, my, that my potassium is low. Yeah, so pretty much all fruits and vegetables have a lot of vitamins and minerals that, like, you know, um, oranges, like I was saying, have a lot of vitamin C. They also have iron. They also have potassium. Like, they also have, like, pretty much every nutrient, but just in, like, varying amounts. So, like, kale and spinach often, like, they're known for having, like, more iron. Um, but bananas have iron, too. You know, it's like every, that's why, like, it's good to eat a variety. If you're trying to eat healthy, it's good to eat a variety of plant foods um, because, oh, um, oh, that looks a little better. Um, because then you will be sure to get everything because, you know, there might be small amounts of iron in bananas, but there's a lot in um, spinach. So you can like different uh, fruits and vegetables can like sort of fill in the holes for other ones. Oh, well, I just noticed a green screen behind you. Yeah. <laughs> what is another green screen background? Would you like to do the office? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I should do the office next time. <laughs> but I think, you know, since I'm wearing a Golden Girls t-shirt. I should wear, or I should have a Golden Girls background. All right, have fun folding your laundry, Cheyenne. Oranges are awesome. I can agree with that. What do you like better, pumpkin pie spice or actual pumpkin pie? So, depends. Am I trying to be healthy or am I just trying to eat something that tastes good? Because pumpkin pie is always going to be the best. But if you're eating healthy, you can still put pumpkin pie spice in a lot of things, like oatmeal, smoothies. That's about all I, all I put it in. <laughs> but I know that there's other applications I just don't. I'm just, I make the same things all the time, and I put very little effort into when I'm making stuff. I want to just, like, kill the hunger and not spend too much time in the kitchen and not hate what I eat. Now, I think I got that from my parents. <laughs> I have to go start dinner. All right, Todd, have fun. Did you know Mr. Kohler, Mr. Poli before he was a customer? Yeah, actually, that's why he was in the videos because he was just my friend, and I was like, hey, you got to shop for your... Actually, I think he said that he was coming by to shop for his... Um, his... I think it was his boyfriend he was shopped for the first time. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember the timeline. Um, it was for Valentine's or Easter or something like that. might have been Easter. But, um, 
yeah, he said he was stopping by and I was like, all right, let's make a video about it. He's like, okay. And then people really liked it. So we just kept doing it. Who are the Golden Girls? The Golden Girls were a TV show. I think it was popular in the 80s, 90s. Or maybe 70s. I don't know. I don't even know. I just watched it on Hulu a little bit. Oh, gotta go. I will see y'all next live. Be safe. Stay healthy and uh, be blessed. All right. Yeah, we'll see you next time, Rhonda. No matter what we're doing, we'll figure out what we're doing for next live stream before next Friday. Yeah, we only started calling him Mr. Polly because he's a teacher. I just call him Polly. <laughs> That's what me and my friends have always called him. Yeah, Polly has been on my channel, on this channel, I think once. It's a couple years ago. Just when uh, we were hanging out at a track meet. What size shirt do I wear? I want to make one. Um, usually I wear a size extra medium. This is a big bowl. I'm still eating it. <laughs> Consider Thai food like a cashew chicken. Ooh. I do like Thai food. I don't really have a whole lot of experience making it, though. Wow, Betty White is 98. It's weird thinking, like, how old she is, yeah. 80s and 90s, they were great years. Yeah, okay. That's, so that's what it was, I guess. You were so kind. Yeah, so, uniquely yours. I don't know what you want to make me for a shirt, but I know you have access to the, the Hercules address. Can you guys hear the thunder? Should I open a window so you guys can hear it when it thunders? <laughs> I still watch Golden Girls now. I really started loving it after I couldn't sleep when I broke. Oh, that sucks. But yeah, it's on Hulu. You Oh, you can hear it. Okay. Thunder is awesome. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people like to sleep with Thunder. Yes, please open up a window. All right. Just a crack, because I don't want rain coming in here. It's not, like, really raining or anything. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll open up this one, I guess. Oh, it's been months since I opened up a window. I'll open up this one too. Ugh. Nah, I'm just gonna leave this one down. That's an that's an annoying one. You guys probably just broke your earbuds or your ear bones. Yeah, you broke your ear bones. Heavy rain stayed a bit south of us in Ottawa. I'm definitely a bit south of you. We love the sound of rain. Yeah, I, it's nice to take a nap too, or just sleep too. Tasty window sound. <laughs> We can definitely hear the thunder. Oh, cool, yeah. I was I wondered if you guys could hear it. I broke my earbuds. <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, give me a thumbs up if you can hear the thunder. Well, not right now, but if you could. Come on, so now there's going to be no more thunder. Why there's thunder, there's lightning. Be safe, yeah. Or where you said there's thunder, there's lightning. Oh, this is the good stuff. What is my favorite fruit? Cherimoya. I don't have it that often, though. It's very hard to find a ripe one around here. Did Syracuse reopen today, or are you guys still in the shutdown counties? Um, I think maybe it's today, or maybe it is today that like, things are opening back up, but I'm, I'm not going back out into the world just yet. Pamels are better than oranges. I don't know. They're just like a lot of extra rind to to it like you have to just get through so much extra and it just costs more if someone gave me a pomelo i would not complain but i would 
I would prefer to go for an orange over pomelo. Why do you like uh, pomelos over oranges, Vegeta? Come on. I hate when, like, you can't stab it. There we go. I'm hearing thunder here in Houston, Texas right now. Oh, wow, it's thundering everywhere. I'm sleepy right now. <laughs> I do tie-dye. Oh, cool, yeah, my mom would love tie-dye. If you made, oh, well, yeah, you said you're making a tie-dye shirt. Um, if you're making me a tie-dye shirt, I like tie-dye, too. I love watermelon. Oh, my God, I love watermelon, too. Tangelos are good. Looks like an orange uh, with an Audi. Yeah, I, I'd i say Tangelos might be my favorite orange. I've had some really, really, really good Tangelos. The cost in rind... The cost in rind is the cost for the sweet, juicy, tangy boy. <laughs> it's bigger than I thought he was going to say pomelo is bigger than an orange. Yeah, pomelos are bigger than an orange. Everything started reopening today here in Pittsburgh, but I am not going out into the real world either. Yeah, oh, pomegranates. Yeah, pom pomegranates are good. I don't, I guess I don't love biting the seeds they taste okay i don't really buy that many pomegranates but if they're if someone's just offering them i'll take it <laughs> i usually just buy like honey crisp apples oh i have some pinata apples oh, i'll probably use some pinata apples tonight i've got them from trader joe's they're super good um honey crisp apples pinata apples bananas i just had some strawberries Sometimes I'll like grapes, but I feel like a lot of times I'm not really in a grape mood. Jackfruit's good. I bought like the the actual jackfruit is I think it's better than like the canned or the frozen stuff. It's the frozen stuff tastes, still tastes like pretty similar, but the fresh stuff is obviously freshest is bestest. You know. Pinata apples never heard never heard of those. I'll show you guys. I mean, it just looks like an apple, but <laughs> nope, not in here. They're over here. Ooh. Pinata apples. Pinata. Yeah, they are from Trader Joe's. Maybe I'll slide into one and try to describe it as best I can, other than, um, it tastes like an apple. <laughs> Let me just, uh, go behind the kitchen over here. I'm actually pretty full, just from that one bowl. Oh, I love that, like, once I open up the window, then all the rain's gone. <laughs> or the thunder, at least. Gotta make sure it's not going to fall. There we go. All right. It's kind of hard, like a gala. A little bit sweeter, though. Yeah, definitely sweeter. It's a very sweet, kind of hard apple. Um, I would still say my favorite, though, is probably Honeycrisp. I like Snapdragons, too. But, yeah, Honeycrisp, I just like, well, the ones I get, like, Honeycrisp, they're usually, like, very big from Wegmans. And they're just, like, satisfying to bite into because they're just so big. And they're, they're a little bit softer than these, but they're not, like, as soft and mealy as, like, a Red Delicious. Ooh, Envy Apples. I really like Envy Apples, actually. Yes. Those I get from Trader Joe's. Those are really, really... Those might be my favorite, actually. Those and Honeycrisp. When you were working at Trader Joe's, what was the employee discount? 10%. Granny Smith. Yeah, Granny Smiths are... I like those, too, sometimes.
Mm. Yeah, I like mangoes too. Champagne mangoes are good, yeah. <laughs> you remember me running with the watermelon? Yeah, that was a while ago. Mangoes, yeah, mangoes are really good. When you're working at Trader Joe's, do you ever want to be a manager? No, I actually started working part time, and I was doing YouTube, and I was, like I just wanted to be a YouTuber. And then after six months, I was <laughs> full time. Ever tried yellow watermelon? Yes. Tastes like normal watermelon. <laughs> I think Anna said, now let's name our favorite types of potatoes. Obviously sweet potato. Um, it's like probably just like golden potato. I just think they're, I don't know if they're good for like fries. I mostly just make fries. Um, or I might use it for like a queso. Mm. I have some frozen blueberries. I understand the obsession. What's the point if it doesn't taste yellow? Because it can charge you more. Because it's a novelty. Even if it doesn't taste yellow. Have I tried Japanese sweet potatoes? Yes. I'm not... I didn't love the texture. As much as like, or maybe the taste. I think I like the taste of normal sweet potatoes better. Yeah. But I'm not complaining though. Someone gave them to me. <laughs> I think that's why I say a lot. Like, I wouldn't go buy it, but I also wouldn't complain if someone gave it to me. Mashed potatoes for days. Yeah. Okay, I can get behind that. Yukon gold potatoes, yeah, I, yeah, that's. I think that's what I was talking about. Golden potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes, maybe that's what I meant. What do you do if you get a sweet tooth? Um, well, my parents own a candy store, so so there's that. Um, or sometimes fruit will just suffice. Um, but I don't have any like dessert or anything in the house. Um, Kara has like a Ben and Jerry's, um, obviously dairy free ice cream in the freezer. Um, that's really it. We don't really have much dessert or anything in the house. Just food, food. It's raining a little bit harder now. Can you guys hear the rain too? Hmm. Favorite candy from Hercules. Chocolate covered pecan brittle, I think. I think that'd be it. What about you guys? For those of you who have tried the Hercules vegan candy, what would you say is your favorite? Are you sharing with anyone other than Kara? Nope, it's just Kara. I think I hear the rain, but it's faint. Here, maybe you can hear it if I bring my microphone over here. I might be able to hear an airplane driving by. Jim. Driving by. Oh my god, yeah, the carrot cake was so good. <laughs> the rain sounds like broken headphones. Oh, like it just sounds like staticky. Yeah, it's louder by the window. Well, that makes sense. Or the watermelon candy. Yeah, the watermelon candy keeps getting sold out. Like, we just made some more, though, the other day, but I don't know if you were talking about how you just went and it was still sold out. 
But yeah, they will they'll still be making more though. So as long as you click the email when available, and you just gotta pounce when you get it, when you get that email. Alright, I should move this bowl. It's like trying to focus on the bowl and not me. If that'll help. Trying to find out because there's like a delay. I'm trying to see if it helps. Eh, a little bit. The orange creams. Oh, those are good. Oh, but they're not covered um, with uh, vegan chocolate. So we we have made a couple dark chocolate covered um, vegan assorted creams, um, but then we stopped because we're like, all right, well, unless we get a whole other starch bin, maybe even a starch room, we probably wouldn't be able to do it because of potential cross contamination. Um, I mean, really, the only there's only one recipe, the uh, buttercream chocolate buttercream recipe that has any butter in it. All the other ones, all the cream sort of creams are vegan. It's basically just like sugar, water, corn syrup, invertase, flavoring oils, and color, and they're all vegan. But the chocolate buttercream, of course, uses butter, and that goes in like, the same starch cast as. The other ones. Dark chocolate pecan turtles. Those are good. I'm just speaking from before I was vegan. Because <laughs> I had pretty much... I had a lot of stuff from my parents' shop before I was vegan. I'll say the milk chocolate was my favorite. Right, I'm just going to lick my bowl. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. If you guys end up making this recipe... I mean, one, tag me on Instagram so I can see your creation. Um, and you'll probably also find that it's good for stuff other than just mac and cheese. Like, sometimes I'll just dip chips in it. It's like a, just a good sauce. Um, yeah, you can probably bring it to a party and just be like, like, I don't know, some kind of like cheesy sauce of some kind. And I'm sure people would not complain about it. Especially with hot sauce, I think it's really good. I gotta go. It's been fun. Love to you and your families. Bye. Oh my god, can I get a shout out? Faye, Fayad Farunia. Hello. <laughs> Butchered your name. Oh well, thanks for the heads up. I'll do that. I can't wait to try that and the cotton candy. Yeah, the cotton candy ones. Honestly, I haven't had one that I didn't like. Clove spice hard candy and the lime assorted chocolates. I see you have a taste for the finer things in life. We heard you like the bowl. <laughs> yeah, I was not lying. Um, all right, well, it's five. I streamed for two hours. Oh, thanks for everyone who stayed the whole time. But I should um, clean up so Kara doesn't come home to a mess. I uh, I tore apart the other room so I could have more counter space and stuff in here. So I got to put everything back and then put, put away all my equipment and light and stuff that I took out. Um, so... Again, thank you for everyone who stuck around, especially the people who are here like the whole time. Um, and thank you for everyone who sent me super chats and supported me. Thanks for just being here. And I will have to find out later this week. Maybe I'll take a poll um, and see if you guys want to do uh, a workout or if you guys want to do um, the energy balls. I think those are the, the two that I'm like kind of back and forth on. So anyway... I will see you guys next Friday. Thanks for being here. And I'll see ya or something. Bye.